What if Palpatine went to Mustafar with Anakin in Revenge of the Sith? That is our story for today. I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get right into it. Our story begins on Coruscant, as Emperor Palpatine is proclaiming himself as Emperor of the Galaxy. The Clone War has ended, the Jedi are dead, the Separatists are on the run, and standing in this rising pod in the center of the capital of the galaxy are the Sith. Darth Sidious and Darth Vader, standing together. Sidious decided that in this moment, as he proclaimed himself as Emperor Palpatine, he wanted his new apprentice to be by his side, so the galaxy could see the man that saved his life from the treasonous Jedi. As Palpatine said that the attempt on his life has left him scarred and deformed, he looked to Anakin, putting a hand on his shoulder, and he said that it was the heroics of Anakin Skywalker that saved his life. The people cheered, and he continued, telling the people that Anakin saw through the lies of the Jedi, and in the end, he chose to side with the people and with the new empire. This got another resounding cheer from the galaxy, and Anakin felt vindicated. He raised his own hands into the air, nodding his thanks to the people for accepting him. He was a murderer of countless Jedi of all ages, but the people didn't care about that. They saw strength, power, authority, and an end to the war, and so they cheered. But not every senator cheered for this. Senator Padme Amidala looked on in disgust as her husband, Anakin Skywalker, stood atop an empire. She remembered Naboo just before they got married, when Anakin jokingly said that a dictatorship might be the way to peace, and she saw now that Anakin believed this to be true. When Anakin turned his head to Padme's pod, she was avoiding eye contact, and Anakin became frustrated, but he continued looking to the crowd until the speech came to an end. When it was over, Palpatine and Anakin would stand together in the Senate chamber, as Palpatine said they must now leave for Mustafar. The Separatist leadership awaits them, and they must be dealt with. From there, the droid shutdown command must be issued, so Palpatine wanted to go with Anakin to make sure the droids were shut down for good, and he put Masameda in charge until he comes back. Before they left, Anakin contacted Padme on his comlink, but she didn't answer, so Anakin would just leave a message telling her that he was going to Mustafar and he will be back soon. And so, as the Sith took off to Mustafar, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Grandmaster Yoda found out the truth about who did this to the galaxy. Anakin, now Vader, has turned to the dark side, and Yoda knew what must be done. He told Obi-Wan to find Skywalker, do what must be done to defeat the Sith, while he takes on Darth Sidious here on Coruscant. The two Jedi would go their separate ways, with Obi-Wan following Padme to the landing platform, sneaking aboard her ship, while Yoda began sneaking through the Senate chambers. Padme was going to Mustafar, so she could talk to Anakin alone. No one except for Masameda knew that Palpatine was with him, and Padme wanted to see if Anakin was being mind-controlled or something. And if not, Padme looked down to the dagger in her sleeve. She would try to do what was best for the galaxy. Obi-Wan was unknowingly hidden away, ready to confront his former student. And on Mustafar, the two Sith would enter the Mustafar control center, wasting no time, moving through the room without hesitation, cutting down Gunray, Poggle, Sandhill, Watt Tambor, every other leader or security member in here, until the floor was littered with the Separatists. Palpatine began working on the droid shutdown command as he turned to his student, telling Vader that he senses something is coming, something dangerous. He told Vader to be prepared, but Vader knew that the only danger was himself. Soon, he would save Padme, and he would strike Sidious down, claiming this empire for himself with his wife and child by his side. During all of this on Coruscant, Yoda went to find Sidious, but instead found only Masameda standing alone, working on establishing the Empire. Moss looked to Yoda with fear, then sent guards after him, but Yoda tossed them aside like trash and asked Masameda where Sidious was. Of course, Moss refused to say, but Yoda discreetly sunk into the Force, searching Moss's mind, looking for his greatest desires, and Yoda began influencing his mind, telling Moss that if he tells him where Sidious is, then the Emperor will die, and he can take over. Moss considered this, not knowing that Yoda used a subtle mind trick, and he did like that idea. So he told Yoda that Sidious is on Mustafar, and Moss imagined soon controlling the galaxy as Emperor by himself. And on Mustafar, Anakin stood on a balcony overlooking the lava planet while Sidious worked inside, and before long, a ship would enter the atmosphere. Padme's ship. Anakin didn't hesitate to run across the bridge and onto a landing platform, 
Running into Padme's scared, shaky arms, the two of them hugged, and Padme pulled away, asking Anakin what is really going on. Did he truly kill all the Jedi? Is he really standing atop an empire? Anakin looked back at her with confusion, saying that he did all of this for her. He did everything so that they could control the galaxy, make things the way they want them to be, create a safe galaxy for their child. Padme felt a cheer running down her cheek, but suddenly Anakin's gaze turned cold as he looked up. Obi-Wan was here. Obi-Wan began walking down the ramp, ready to confront his former student, but as he did, the main door to the control center opened in the distance. Obi-Wan felt a chill running down his spine as he realized that Anakin was not the only Sith here. Sidious was here, and he moved like a shadow to get behind Anakin, telling his students that he knew something was coming. Sidious reached out with the Force, yanking the dagger out of Padme's sleeve and into his waiting hands, telling Anakin that his friends are here to kill him. Padme was telling Anakin this isn't true, and Obi-Wan was carefully telling Padme to get back onto the ship. Padme stepped onto the ramp, but it was too late. Anakin sifted through his emotions, deciding Padme was a traitor, and he grabbed her by the throat. He lifted Padme up, calling her a traitor, saying she was just like the Jedi, and Anakin turned to throw her across the platform. She hit her head on the ground and was knocked out as the Sith looked back to Obi-Wan. The Jedi Master looked to Padme, then back to the Sith, and Obi-Wan ignited his blue blade for a final stand. Sidious got behind Vader, hissing that this is his final test. Strike down Kenobi, and his journey to becoming a true Sith will be complete. So Anakin ignited his blade, eyes becoming yellow once more, and he flipped onto the ramp, clashing blades with Obi-Wan. The sound of lightsaber blades clashing was heard again and again, as suddenly Master and Apprentice, former brothers now enemies, battled off of the ramp and onto the landing platform, their blades perfectly meeting each other time and time again. And the only thing louder than the clashing sabers was the echoing laugh of Darth Sidious. Skywalker and Kenobi moved along the edge, and Sidious was making sure they stayed in his sight, using the force to shut the doors to the control center, redirecting them back to the center of the landing platform. The fight went on and on, with Anakin's aggression, Kenobi's defense staying completely even. As Sidious watched, he wanted to simply see if his students had what it takes to kill one of his final ties to the light, and he blasted lightning from his fingertips, hitting Obi-Wan in the hand, sending his blade flying away. Anakin swung for the kill, but Obi-Wan reached out his hands, holding Anakin's blade in place. But Anakin kept pushing, his blade penetrating Obi-Wan's force shield, and the blade went right into Obi-Wan's hands. Obi-Wan yelled in pain, as Anakin was able to swing and cut through Obi-Wan's wrists before kicking Kenobi to the ground. Anakin called Obi-Wan's lightsaber to his own hand, and now he held both blue blades across Obi-Wan's neck. Sidious told Vader he has done well, and he told him to strike Kenobi down, his journey to the dark side will be complete. Obi-Wan looked up, telling Anakin he was sorry for all of it, and Anakin snipped the sabers across Kenobi's neck, killing him instantly. The power coursing through his veins was unlike anything ever before, and Sidious told him that he, like Darth Bane, Xana, Tenebris, Plagueis, himself, has now become a true Sith, devoid of light, ready to rule the galaxy. They are the two Sith. Sidious said he controls the power, while Vader craves it, just as Bane wanted. But Vader turned back to his master, saying that indeed he does crave the power. Vader wanted to strike down Sidious here and now, but Sidious smiled, lifting a hand, and lifting Padme's unconscious body into the air. Sidious told Vader that if he tries it, Padme dies right now. Vader's anger was nearly uncontrollable, but his love for Padme took over. He was about to put away the two blades when a small Jedi ship suddenly flew overhead and a small green figure jumped from the ship, igniting his green blade in the air as it was Yoda landing in between the two Sith. Yoda looked to Obi-Wan's fallen body, and with a somber tone, he told the Sith that their destructive reign ends now. Sidious pulled out his red saber, as Anakin was still holding his own and Obi-Wan's blade, and the two Sith began circling Yoda, anticipating the great duel between light and dark. Anakin, with the two blue sabers, moved in with fury. His strikes were powerful but calculated, knowing Yoda's power. Yoda, small but strong in the force, flipped around Anakin's attacks, deflecting the twin blades with his small green saber, each clash sending sparks into the air. And Sidious was at a distance, yellow eyes gleaming with excitement, and he was hurling lightning towards Yoda whenever an opening was presenting itself, not allowing Yoda even a second to breathe. 
Yoda, sensing the darkness coiling around him, began to shift his focus to Sidious, leaping high into the air, spinning towards the Dark Lord with unbelievable speed. Anakin pursued the little green Jedi, his own blades a blur as he intercepted Yoda mid-air, their sabers colliding again. Yoda twisted, landing gracefully, and immediately he jumped into a series of acrobatic maneuvers, taking the fight to Sidious. The Dark Lord blocked the strikes, now in combat with Yoda, as he twisted and turned to keep up with the Jedi, holding him off as Anakin closed in from behind, his own sabers moving perfectly to knock Yoda to the ground and into a battle stance. With a final desperate surge of power, Yoda lunged at Sidious, only to be caught in a deadly trap. With a flick of his wrist, Sidious sent Yoda hurtling backwards with a blast of force lightning, slamming him into the hard metal of Padme's ship as he landed on the edge of the platform. Anakin, seizing the opportunity, moved to strike, only for Sidious to strike first, his crimson blade impaling Yoda, ending the Jedi Master's life. As Sidious turned to revel in his triumph, a sudden shift darkened in the Sith Lord's glee. Anakin's blue sabers plunged through Sidious's chest, the young Sith's face a mask of fury as he betrayed his master. Sidious crumpled to the ground, his reign of darkness cut short immediately. He was gasping for air, crawling to get aboard Padme's ship to try and fly away. But Anakin plunged the sabers through his back, officially ending Sidious's life right as he ended Yoda's. Anakin, Vader, now stood alone as Yoda, Kenobi, and Sidious all lay dead around him. He won, and he threw all three bodies down into the lava below. The Empire, the galaxy, was his to rule. He reached down, scooping up Padme, putting her on the ship where C-3PO and R2-D2 were waiting. Vader had 3PO set course for the medical facility on Coruscant, and R2 went to the back of the ship, going into low power mode, as the little droid could not bear to be around Anakin after everything that he had done. When Padme eventually woke up, she would be in the Coruscant medical facility, and Anakin would be at her side. Although Padme didn't have the Force, she could feel how different he was. Anakin was dead, only Vader remained. And as she was giving birth, Padme felt as if she were the only hope for the galaxy. Only she could someday take down Vader. And a voice that sounded like a mixture of Yoda, Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan whispered to her to trust in the Force, something she could only hear because of Luke and Leia still inside of her. Padme would give birth to the twins, Luke and Leia, and she forced herself to survive, knowing her duties were not yet over. In the aftermath of that fateful day on Mustafar, Anakin Skywalker would ascend to the position of Emperor, seizing control of the galaxy with an iron grip, using Masameda to help convince the galaxy of his power, buying countless senators into supporting him. With this newfound power, Anakin established a regime of unparalleled militarization, using fear and power to control the galaxy. The clone troopers would remain as the backbone of his vast army, while the remnants of the Separatist fleet were absorbed into the Imperial fleet. Anakin's rule would be defined by ruthless efficiency and relentless pursuit of order, with entire systems falling in line or facing a complete cutoff of resources. He enforced loyalty through fear, crushing any dissent with force and expanding the Empire's reach to the furthest corners of the galaxy. Emperor Skywalker ruled from the heart of Coruscant, using pieces of black armor found in Sidious' old medical facility as his own, reforming them to fit his body perfectly, and his imposing presence was a symbol of the Empire's dominance. By his side was Padme Amidala, who played the role of dutiful Empress. Outwardly, she appeared to support Anakin's vision for the galaxy, using her influence to maintain peace and stability within the Empire. However, beneath the facade, Padme was secretly aiding the tiny sparks of rebellion, using her position to gather intelligence and supply resources to those who sought to resist the Emperor's tyranny. Her dual life was constantly filled with danger, but she was driven by the hope that her actions might one day bring about the end of Anakin's dark reign. It was the extremely rare days of providing aid that kept her going, along with raising the twins Luke and Leia to hopefully be like her and Anakin, before his turn, of course. Over the years, the Empire would expand its might, constructing massive fleets of Star Destroyers and battle stations to enforce its will. Anakin's obsession with control and order led to the development of new, more devastating ships designed to keep the galaxy in a constant state of fear. Countless Jedi, including Ahsoka, died to his blade, and for years, there was nobody to stop him. However, as the Empire grew, so would a rebellion, because the Empire was unnatural. Anakin's desperation for complete control was rough, and his fists closed tighter 
and as it did, more cracks would open up. His empire was cracking, breaking, leaking as oppression was the mask of fear. Padme's efforts in the shadows began to bear fruit after around 10 years of slow building, as more and more systems would join the Hidden Rebellion cause. The seeds of the Rebellion would spread across the galaxy, with secret cells operating under the noses of Imperial forces, slowly eroding the foundations of Anakin's empire from within. And Anakin never truly suspected Padme to be behind all of it. He was blinded by love. It would always be his one weakness, whereas Padme fought to avenge Anakin. To her, Vader was always a completely different person. To her, Vader killed Anakin. The man she loved was long gone, and she dedicated her life to bringing down Vader. Meanwhile, the light side of the Force was working in mysterious ways. The spirits of the fallen Jedi had not been entirely vanquished, and Obi-Wan Kenobi's ghost would emerge to guide the next generation. In secret, the voice of Obi-Wan began to communicate with Luke and Leia as they slept, and soon even as they were awake. Anakin's hidden children, who'd been kept out of the public eye to shield them from their father's enemies, were twisting away from the dark. The dark side of the Force was unnatural, and the Force was allowing Obi-Wan's spirit to speak with the twins. Through subtle whispers, visions, Obi-Wan would reveal to them the truth of their heritage and the dangers of the dark side. They would see everything Anakin did, and over the years, Luke and Leia grew up under the influence of their father's empire, training as Sith, but the light of the Force within them grew stronger, guided by Kenobi. As Luke and Leia matured, they were truly questioning the Empire's oppressive rule, and with Obi-Wan's guidance, they sought out the truth, and they would come to understand, from survivors of the Purge, just how evil their father truly was. Their actions remain hidden from their father, who was preoccupied with maintaining his empire, suppressing the growing rebellion, and Padme, aware now of Obi-Wan's ghostly presence, did everything in her power to shield her children from Anakin. She was helping to nurture their potential while continuing to play her dangerous game as the Empress. The siblings, fueled by a desire to bring back the light, would slowly embrace their roles as the heirs of the Jedi, even as they struggled with the dark legacy of their father. By the 20th year of Anakin's rule, the cracks in the Empire had become too deep to ignore. The Rebellion, now a truly formidable force, would launch true strikes against key Imperial targets every single day, crippling the Empire's infrastructure. Padme's covert operations played a crucial role in these victories, and the cost was high, as her relationship with Anakin was increasingly strained. Anakin was driven by paranoia and anger, and he suspected treachery within his circle. But though he was still unaware that the true threat to his empire was under his own roof in the palace. As the galaxy teetered on the brink of war, the stage was set for a final confrontation that could determine the fate of the galaxy, with Luke and Leia at the center of the coming battle. After these 20 years, Padme, Luke, and Leia officially would leave Anakin while he was off-world, joining the Rebellion once and for all, taking the fight to the Empire with their growing army. The Imperial Army of Clone Troopers was aging rapidly, and many of them became disillusioned, as their inhibitor chips were decaying as well, and many would join the Rebellion or just leave the Imperial Army altogether. In Anakin's arrogance, he waited far too long to create a new army or adjust the clones. It was a decaying system. An Emperor Skywalker was soon traveling from world to world himself, enforcing his power on rogue Jedi or rebel cells, ripping them apart with his absurd power. Any planet he touched down on knew they were likely facing their end. He wouldn't leave Coruscant unless absolutely necessary. And at this point in life, the dark side had taken its toll. Anakin was absurdly pale, his eyes yellow, devoid of life, and his skin grew more wrinkly by the day as he tried to contain his own darkness. As time went on, Anakin would eventually track the Rebellion back to Yavin 4, and he would launch an all-out fleet to the planet before he himself flew down to the surface to destroy the rebel base with his own two hands. But as Anakin landed on the surface and moved toward the giant base, Luke and Leia Skywalker would step out to confront him. Anakin, a vessel for the dark side, devoid of any light, told his children to stand down, but they only ignited their blue blades for this final duel. And above the moon of Yavin 4, the space was filled with the final battle. Star Destroyers and Rebellion cruisers were exchanging torrents of turbo laser fire, the intense flashes lighting up the sky. Swarms of TIE fighters were weaving through the chaos, their high-pitched whine contrasting with the deeper roar of the X-Wings. The might of the Empire versus the fight of the Rebellion, the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance as explosions rippled through the battlefront, each one sending debris spiraling into the void. 
And as the battle raged on, the surface would see its own duel, as Anakin Skywalker, still dressed in his dark armor, powered by the darkness, was a storm of fury and power as he took on his own children. Luke and Leia, now powerful Jedi thanks to the secret training of Kenobi, moved with the grace of long-time warriors, their sabers flashing blue as they fended off their father's relentless attacks. The forest around them crackled with energy as trees were splintering, the ground was scorched by their own duel, the air heavy with the tension of a family ripped apart by the pull of the darkness. The echoes of the saber could be heard inside of the base temple as Padme Amidala was aiding the space battle from the ground, praying for her children to survive and win. Anakin's lightsaber was a blur of red as it moved with insane speed, clashing against the blue of his children. He forced them back with every blow, raw power of the dark side coursing through him, but Luke and Leia were fighting as one, their bond as siblings and as Jedi connecting them together. They would counter his attacks with years of training and a deep connection to the light. And as the forest was ripped apart under their power, Luke and Leia jumped at Anakin together, but he was ready, catching them in the air, smashing them hard into the Yavin Temple. The two Jedi were struggling to get up, and Anakin raised his hands, unleashing a huge torrent of force lightning, blasting them hard into the two Jedi. Both Luke and Leia were slowly being ripped apart by the lightning, but the voice of Obi-Wan told them to keep going. Luke and Leia centered themselves, reigniting their blades, deflecting the lightning away, but Vader just kept pouring it at them. The world around them seemed to slow, the darkness threatening to engulf them, but they soon stood firm, and in the midst of the storm, the ghostly forms of Qui-Gon Jinn, Yoda, and Obi-Wan would appear beside them, their presence a beacon of hope. The ghosts of the past were lending their strength, and together, the Jedi pushed back against the overwhelming darkness, holding the line as the battle raged on above and around them. Vader's own lightning suddenly smashed right into his chest, and he was blasted backwards into the trees. Fire was spreading through the forest as Luke and Leia walked through it, fire around them going out as if they were born to quell this darkness, and after years of trying to control the force, Vader was done for. He held up his red blade, but it was no use. Luke cut it away, and Leia stabbed through his heart. The final Sith Lord gasped, dying on the forest floor as the Imperial fleet was ripped apart in space. When it was all over, it was Empress Padme Amidala who would take her rightful place on the throne of the galaxy. But almost immediately, she would begin implementing her vision of a new Republic, tearing apart the tyrannical rule of Vader, making the galaxy safe again, restoring hope. And with the rebellion behind her, the galaxy would truly begin to reform after the poison of the Sith was removed from every planet's system. With the light of the Force reborn, the galaxy embraced the New Republic. Everyone was desperate for unity, for peace, and over the years, Chancellor Amidala would bring the people together as Luke and Leia used the guidance of the fallen Jedi to rebuild the Jedi Order in a new age of peace and light. And folks, that is where our story ends today. I had a few things that I wanted to go with this. There was a lot of different directions it was going to go down, but this is the one I ultimately chose. I haven't, I don't know if I've done one. I've done one billion of these videos approximately, you know, give or take. I don't know if I've done many where Anakin really stays in the darkness the whole way through and like just dies in the darkness. Usually if he does, he ends up ruling forever, but I wanted to do one where his own children are raised to fight and destroy him, like in Return of the Jedi kind of, but just with... You know, City is dying right away, and Anakin just ruling the Empire. I thought it was a different take, and I wanted to kind of mirror um, City as talking to Ben Solo throughout the sequels, just with Kenobi talking to the children in this. I thought that was a fun idea. Kind of a reverse on the dark side with the light, so. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Ultimately, I enjoyed this video a lot, so hope you guys did as well. Uh, novel video, or novel giveaways announced tomorrow. If you want to enter that, go to my videos from a couple days ago. And yeah, you can enter in the comments. Thanks a ton. I'll see you in the next video.